I'm Matt the Camera Guy and welcome to Octane Addicts TV. We got the camera dog here, old Cannon. And what I want to show you is a legal barnyard 400 yard cart. Come on, carry the camera chick. This right here is a legal barnyard 400 chassis. This is a legal barnyard 400 chassis. This right here is not. N-O-T, no, this is not legal. This is a full-blown racing go-kart chassis. And that's what we're talking about today. We're gonna go talk rules next. Stay tuned. So let's talk rules for the Barnyard 400. This event will be happening November 12th in Lamar, South Carolina, Copeland Farms. If it's anything remotely close to the backyard 400, the Barnyard 400 will be epic. So let's talk rules, let's dive into them. First off, Backyard 400 rules are in effect for this race. We are adding these rules to those for our event. Let's just be clear with that up front. The first question we're gonna answer is, what frames are legal? I have my computer out and I will read you the frame rules. And if anybody wants a copy of these rules, all you got to do is email me at yardcartunderworld at gmail.com and I'll be glad to send you a set of the rules or you can go to our messenger at Yardcart on Facebook and you can connect with me from there. Either way, these are the rules, no exceptions. So now these are the extra rules that we have put together for the Barnyard 400 event. And it starts off with frames. A non-suspension production or non-production frame is allowed. That means, guys, yes, you can build your own frame, but you better build it like a yard cart and not a race cart. We will have a tech team there. You will be teched before you go on the racetrack, and we will take probably the top five finishers of the Barnyard 400 and probably we'll draw one random too. So possibly up to six carts in the final tech inspection for the barnyard. So uh, you, it must be made of steel, no aluminum or exotic metals, no suspension allowed on these carts. We've seen some tricked up stuff. We've played with some stuff. Do not have it on these carts because you will not be allowed to run it. Engines must be mounted behind the driver. We don't want any engines on the side. Yard carts did not have engines on the side. So racing carts have engines on the sides and we are well aware of that. A yard cart wheelbase is 45 to 55 inches. If we check your wheelbase, it better be within those parameters. Again, guys, no racing chassis allowed. If you show up with a racing chassis, you will be able to run, but you will not be able to compete in the Barnyard 400. We will have an exhibition part of the show, and any guys that are found illegal or just want to show their ass, hell, we want to see it. So exhibition runs will be, there will be a time for that during the event, and Guys that don't meet tech inspection will be forced to the exhibition. So guys, get these carts right because we don't want to put up with a bunch of bullshit when we get there. This event is about fun. Build these cars right and let's have fun and let's just root through the pack and see who's the best driver that day. Bodies are mandatory and have to resemble a production or race type vehicle. Now we have guys doing stock car, go-kart bodies made of fiberglass. We've had indie cars. We're introducing some new things, some big wheel bodies, fiberglass composite 
plastic bodies are allowed, no steel or aluminum bodies. You will not be able to run. That is a safety concern for what we do. So no steel or aluminum bodies allowed. So let's talk bumpers. So back in April at Indy, we were kind of concerned with bumpers where we would get hooked together and, and not be able to get off each other or run up on somebody's tire and get up in the air and you know people get hurt that way. So bumpers, front and rear bumpers are required. Make them, if you have to make a bumper on your cart, make sure it is made out of one inch OD steel. The lowest rail on the bumper may be no higher than five inches from the ground. Get a tape measure. If you gotta put a bumper on, measure it. We're also gonna be on dirt too, so there's going to, it's not gonna be smooth like on asphalt. So consider that, consider your ride height too. Guys that competed in the Backyard 400, we we're gonna do some testing and we may make it mandatory to raise the bodies up. We don't know yet, we haven't been out there to test, but we will keep you updated on that. Let's see, front bumpers are not to exceed the width of the frame and to be no taller than eight inches. If you can't read a tape measure, find somebody that can and these are all safety concerns, guys. So dirt's a little different animal. We will be bumping into each other, not intentionally. It's just dirt, you know, that's all you can say. Rear bumper is not to exceed the maximum tread width of the tires. Again, guys, safety concern, don't do it. Bumpers must have closed ends and no sharp edges. All right, I've raced my whole life. There are ways to get back at guys, and there are ways to cut tires. We are in open air cockpits, guys. Let's get the sharp edges off because you can really hurt somebody with that. So no sharp edges on the bumpers, and make sure your bumpers are closed in. Nerf bars, guys. Nerf bars are required, and they cannot come past the wheels, okay? So get you a straight edge, straighten your wheels, lay them up against your wheels. If you gotta put your uh, Nerf bars on, steel is, you know, if you make them out of something else, as long as it's safe, we're gonna allow it. But no aluminum, no conduit, no wood, and no plastic for Nerf bars. Safety, all carts must have a kill switch which they all come with a switch on the back of the motor. If you don't have a kill switch wired in it, we would like for you to, but it's not a deal breaker, but we would love to have a kill switch within arm's reach of the driver. Just, guys, shit happens. It's racing. I mean, it's just part of it. Aluminum or plastic racing seats are recommended, but not mandatory. So you can, you know, some of us guys are bigger and we don't exactly fit on these things until we extend the pedals or do the live axle to where we can move ourselves around because of the motors behind us. But make sure you have a comfortable seat on there because you will need it on dirt because it will be bouncing you around and it just makes good sense. Wheels and hubs. Any stock or aftermarket wheels are allowed. Maximum wheel width is 10 and 3 eighths. Maximum wheel diameter is six inches. Aluminum hubs we're gonna allow. And wheel spacers, I'm still up in the air. I don't know really why you'd need a wheel spacer, but that will be on a case by case basis. Tires, turf tires, and any type of racing tires we're gonna allow. Now, what we aren't gonna allow is ATV mud terrains or tractor tires. They'll tear up the racetrack, guys. Don't bring them. We cannot afford, with no suspensions, we can't afford to be rutting this track up because somebody will get hurt. Brakes. Brakes can be hydraulic, but they are not mandatory but recommended, okay? We found this out. You can ask Mark Spence. Ask Steve Yeeter. Steve Yeeter 
that guy felt, I mean, he, he got a bunch of shit because he had mechanical problems, guys. I know Steve Yeater. He's a great guy. I don't foresee him just running over people, but when you compete, you have mechanical problems. Sometimes it makes you be the bad guy. Let's get some good brakes on these things so we can stop. Also, again, we're going to be on the dirt, so you're going to need some brakes. If you don't have them, you will be in trouble. No scrubber brakes. We do not want to see the flapper brakes. Drum brakes will be allowed, but make sure your brakes are working properly. That was the biggest takeaway we had out of the Backyard 400. You just melt those drum brakes. Ask Mark Spence. Mark Spence is as hard on brakes as I've seen anyone. And he said, you know, maybe lap four or five, he said, the brakes are butter. All right, so that's going to bring us into the axles. Axles that we are going to allow, you can back half your cart and make it a live axle. That way it will give you hydro brakes. Hydro brakes, guys, are the way to go. It's a little expensive. We've been looking at kits. Kits will run you anywhere from 150 to 400, depending on what you want and how tricked up you want to get. Guys, live axles is the way to go. I suggest it. Straight axles are legal, and differential axles are legal too. So don't think you have to put a live axle on here to compete. Now, will you be competitive? Eh, I don't know. We'll uh, do some testing and find out here soon. Chain guard and sprockets are recommended, okay? These chains, ask Adam Valentine. These chains will come off these carts. Now, if we break a chain, that gets bad because they are behind us and we are there and we will get hit. So chain and sprocket guards are recommended, but not mandatory. Fuel, pump gas only, no alcohol. Now, pump gas, you can get racing fuel if you want to run it. You can get that at the pump. So uh, E85, but no alcohol in these things. If we test the fuel and you got alcohol, you gone. No performance enhancing additives either. So again, we test the fuel, we find something, get out. Aftermarket aluminum tanks are recommended and must be vented away from the engine. Most of us have the tanks between our legs, but if you run the stock tank, I mean, that's perfectly fine too. I've seen them on the back. I've seen them still on the motors. Just be safe about it, guys. Just, that's all I can say. Safety is number one here. So here's the big difference from the Backyard 400 to the Barnyard 400. Engines, we strongly, strongly suggest that you go by a Predator 212, not a ghost motor, a stock Predator 212. It will run you, I think right now I checked, they're running about $160. Guys that are not gonna run 212s, you need to run a factory rated up to 212 engine, all right? But again, we strongly suggest that you run the Predator 212. Stage one kits only. All right, 18 pound or less valve springs. A stock Predator 212 comes with about 10 and a half pound springs on it. You can put 18 pound springs on it, but no more. This will hold your RPM level if you take your governor out, okay? Any springs that are more than 18 pounds, and we are going to check this, will have the possibility to shatter the flywheel. And if that flywheel shatters, you and anybody else around you are gonna get a taste of what it feels like. And that could be anything from uh, embedding in your arm to uh, we're toting you out in an ambulance and you don't make it. So flywheels are dangerous, guys. Please, please, please 
keep 18 pound springs in these things if you take the governor out. The flywheel will explode with higher springs. It just lets it keep revving and that factory rated flywheel will explode. So that is why we are not allowing billet flywheels or cast iron, anything, cast aluminum, cast whatever. Do not, you have to use the factory flywheel in your motor. And because of that, 18 pound springs are as high as you can go, valve springs. So guys, safety, safety, safety. Again, no billet or cast flywheels allowed. I think exhaust pipes can be, are allowed or how, headers, whatever you want to do, as long as it's not a safety issue. Uh, let's see, clutch, any centrifugal clutch you want to run, all right? So with all that being said, let me get this pulled up. So here is the big difference. We want, guys, we recommend, strongly recommend, I'll say it again, we recommend you run the 212 because of this rule. The claim rule. The claim rule is designed to keep costs down, the theory being if one can have his race engine and clutch snatched up for $275, claims he will be unwilling to dump a bunch of money in his motor, okay? Claimant, this is how the rule is going to work. The claimant must be entered in the race. Claim engine must have cleared technical inspection for the event. It is not implied or guaranteed that the claimed engine is legal or will pass future inspections. Let the buyer beware. Engine claims are as is. Claimant must provide cash in the amount of $275. Claimed engine will be delivered under the supervision of a technical inspector or race director at the end of the event. Claimed engine will be complete, including clutch, carburetor, airbox, exhaust system, electrical system, and base plate. No exceptions, guys. We are trying to keep everybody safe here. Wheel speed will be a thing on dirt. Guys, please do not try to cheat these things up because you will get caught. Again, it takes 10 minutes to tear one of these motors apart Difference from the backyard to the barnyard, we wow. will tear your shit down and look at it. Top five, I guarantee you finish in the top two, you're going to take your motor home in a cardboard box because we are not going to allow it. Failure to deliver engine will result in forfeiture of your awards at this event. And it may lead to suspension for future events or you may ask not to come back. The sanctioning body may claim your engine for $275 as well. Their claim will take precedent over any other claims and they reserve the right to reject any engine claims that are made. Guys, the economy is bad. Racing is going downhill right now. People aren't wanting to spend money. We want to race. So we're trying to do it as cheap as possible. If you have never done it, I guarantee you will have permagran when you get done. That is all I have for the rules right now. These are subject to change at any time. So this gives you an idea of what they're going to be and get those carts built. If you need to get a hold of me, have any questions, or need me to explain anything to you, again, Yard Cart Underworld on Facebook is where you need to find me. Also, Matt the Camera Guy, hit me up on Messenger, whatever. Get a hold of me and I will be glad to clarify and answer any questions. It may not be what you want to hear, but it's going to be the way it is. 
Just want to thank Copeland Farms for hosting this event. There will be, from what I understand, a farmer's market, some car shows, tractor shows. There'll be some different events going on too. Uh, we will come in that Friday like we did at Travis Bell's race. Uh, camping, we will test Friday night, Friday afternoon, Friday evening. Uh, test, you will have a happy hour in the morning to test and make final adjustments on Saturday. And we look to kick the show off at 12 o'clock. Other than that, guys, big thanks to Celebrity Machines, SRI Performance, Ultimate Show Glow. Anybody else I may have forgotten, I'll get you in this next time. Love you guys. Can't wait to see you in November. And we'll see you next week.